Hi everyone. Um, having spent the last three weeks or so um, using the Eaton satellite, uh, I thought I would do a quick video update uh, on my original review. Um, some of you might have seen that I um, posted an article to the SWLing post uh, yesterday, I think it was, um, with my views on how I'm getting on with this radio and uh, its general performance and some catches, uh, notably some of the regional air stations that um, that I managed to pull in with kind of signal strength and clarity that was kind of previously unheard of really. Um, I'd heard them all before but not as well and you know this is kind of a reoccurring theme with the uh, satellite. I'm, I'm hearing stations that I've been listening to for the last 18 months with better signal than ever previously and it's kind of getting beyond uh, coincidence I believe um, you know in terms of ultimate performance this is a really really good radio um, but kind of more specifically um, if I talk about the uh, filtering first um, they do work very well. I've got a signal here on 7220 kilohertz. This is Romania, and I'm just on the telescopic. Um, in fact, you can see the signal because um, that's it on my Newelec RTL SDR with the Hammett up up converter and sort of three or four meters of wire indoor signal. Um, so the filters actually they do work very well. Um, and I can demonstrate them here. So 2 kilohertz, 2.5, 3, 4, and 6. The only thing that I've noticed is that even on the narrowest filter, it does sometimes suffer still from adjacent QRM, more so than with my sort of vintage Sony portables. And it might be that the narrow filter. I don't know what the actual values are for those radios. I know the filter on the SW55 is very narrow. You actually use quite a bit of audio uh, strength when using a narrow filter, but it works exceptionally well. Um, with this radio, two kilohertz uh, still produces, you know, pretty nice audio. So it may well be that it's not actually as narrow. Um, but there's no doubt they do work and they do work very well. Um, and you know, I use, I tend to use all of those options. Um, if I'm just tuning around, then I will probably, I think I use either 2.5 or three. Um, on big signals, obviously you can take it up to six. Um, but you know, they do work. Um, in terms of the sync, and I made this point in my article yesterday, it's a bit more of a hit and miss affair. Um, if I engage sync now with this relatively strong signal, so there the chevrons appearing while the sync engages, and so now we have sync uh, upper side band. Uh, and, you know, I'm not convinced that that's a clearer signal necessarily. Um, we can press the button again and we can select lower side band. And then if we return to AM, you know, I think that I don't think it's doing anything to positively affect the signal to noise. On a weak signal, it definitely increases the signal amplitude, but it seems to have increased the noise floor as well. So the signal to noise effectively remains unchanged. You just end up with uh, a bigger signal. Um, but the delta is the same. Um, it, it does work, but it doesn't work as well as the Sony ICF 2001D, for example. But then I've actually not come across a radio with sync that does work better than that, perhaps the ELAD. Uh, but that, I guess that's not really fair because it's not comparing apples with apples. Um, then if we go to um, SSB mode, so again the chevrons while it engages, and so here we have upper sideband reception and you can engage the fine tuning uh, or 
fast or slow by pressing in the tuning knob, which is quite a nice idea. And if you can hear that. affecting the audio and it can be adjusted to produce sort of fairly natural uh, speech. So this is lower sidebar. So there you go. So there you go. So I'd say the, the SSB reception is more effective than the sync. Uh, and I have made use of it. Um, so that's probably the only downside I think is that the sync, and this is kind of a reoccurring theme with other radios as well, obviously the PL880. Um, there's issues with synchronous detection on that radio. The sync on this is actually very similar in the way that it works to the Sony ICF uh, SW77, where effectively you engage sync and you can toggle between upper and lower sideband. Uh, and as I noted in my um, article, um, to have to wait for the sync to engage if you're used to using the 2001D might be a little bit annoying because assuming that you can the signal's strong enough and the sync on the Sony works with very weak sync signals it engages almost instantaneously um, in terms of sensitivity this radio is very very close to the sensitivity of the 2001D it's only on very weak signals that are fading where audio is delivered uh, to the 2001D, you know, um, with this radio, in that scenario, you, you, you know, you often you don't hear anything. So I'm talking about a very, very weak signal that is fading in and out, and you're hearing snippets of audio on the Sony. Um, you know, it does deliver audio, uh, but with the with this radio, um, often you don't hear anything. But on, ev on anything else. This radio hears what the uh, 2001D hears. Given its form factor, it's about 25% the size of the Sony. Um, and given the, the performance is so close, you know, for, for me, I think it's a triumph. Uh, it's a, it's as good a performer as the ICF SW55. And I think it's, it's as good as the ICF SW100, um, you know, with that little box of tricks as a miracle. Um, but this radio is up there. There's no doubt, and for people to kind of question that it's too small to be a satellite or it's too cheaply built, whatever the reason, doesn't perform well enough. You know, in my view, my personal view is that I don't agree with that. I think that it's it performs more than adequately to be worthy of the satellite branding. Um, it's one of the best portables on the market now. Um, I was looking at Tom Tom's um, video uh, yesterday, I think. Hamrad 88 and the letter, even the lettering on his buttons on his example were definitely not al aligned properly. Uh, mine actually doesn't have that. Mine actually looks like it, it's been put together with a bit more care than his. And so I, it might well be that um, he's got a, I don't know, a bad example. It's all about manufacturing yield at the end of the day and quality control. So there may be some variability, I'm, I'm not sure.
but all I know is that in my experience this radio works really well and um, and you know seems to be built with um, decent quality um, what else uh, the soft muting someone asked me to um, demonstrate it so that's basically where they tried to the radio basically attempts to mute noise between signals so let's try this on shortwave so let's tune up So there's not actually a, not, a lot of background noise as you tune through. So definitely works. I know some people don't like it because I, I think on a crowded band, the soft mute can actually work to attenuate the, the signal that you might be trying to listen to. Um, so for some DXs, it's not ideal. I haven't really noticed it myself. Uh, but I know that it can happen um, but otherwise yeah I mean it, I I just don't I well literally don't take any note any any notice of it because um, uh, when I'm DXing I'm typically looking listening to specific frequencies um, I don't tend to tune up and down the band uh, or a particular band you know if I'm out DXing I've usually got a target or targets in mind um, what else the, the display is fantastic it's very readable in daylight um, in natural light artificial light um, one kind of idiosyncrasy is that it is possible to either switch the radio off and actually leave the display on and I did that uh, over Christmas but so as you can see it, it's uh, very very clear easily readable um, it's, I think it's easily the best display of any radio I've got bar the display on the front panel of the ELAD. Um, I read today that the issue with the external antenna socket requiring a stereo jack actually isn't the case, um, which is good news because it means I don't have to make another patch cable. Um, and uh, I can use it with the um, Benito Bonnie Whip without any other kind of modifications, um, which I've obviously already done. Um, and as I say, overall, you know, I'm extremely pleased with this radio. Um, but as I said, it, it, the criteria upon which people, you know, measure their uh, satisfaction with the radio is different from listener to listener, and it largely depends on the listening habits. You know, I'm almost entirely engaged in sort of DXing. Um, I wouldn't use this radio for to casually listen to the bands. I'd use probably one of my vintage ASUs, which we've got far better audio. Um, and as far as quality control is concerned, uh, you know, I've bought radios that have literally started falling apart out of the box, so that's worst case scenario. So for me, you know, if the radio stays in one piece and can put up with a bit of rough treatment, which mine tend to get, I'm happy. Um, you know, I, I won't look over a new radio with a sort of fine tooth comb, um, but to, to other people that's important to them, So and that's perfectly perfectly fine uh, so overall you know in summary a very very sensitive portable radio with very good selectivity with good uh, SSB reception with probably only adequate sync uh, uh, I think that's probably the best I can say really you know synchronous detection is, is sort of adequate um, I have other radios particularly the 2001D, um, where the sync uh, circuit is, is more effective. Um, it handles a long wire extremely well. Um, you know, I've attached, uh, I think, 90 meters of wire, and I haven't really noticed any signs of overloading. And in that respect, it's the best portable I own. And if you're a hardcore DXer, um, and, you, and you take your radios out on a de-expedition, being able to attach, you know, 50, 100 meters of wire and DX, you know, sensibly, but without overloading is a massive bonus. And this radio just does not seem to overload on even the longest of long wires, um, whereas all my Sonys do, in fact, all my, all my other portables do. Um, so that is a huge bonus if you're looking for a portable radio 
you know, for some hardcore DXing because all the really difficult DX requires some form of long wire at some point. Um, so yeah, so overall, really happy with it. Um, I've got a couple more reception videos so I've uploaded Voice of Indonesia today. Literally sounded like it was coming from the centre of Oxford. It was that clear. Um, and then I have a series of videos, uh, reception videos, where I'm comparing it to the Sony 2001D, uh, which I guess is kind of like the benchmark for now until at some point I take the E1 out uh, and start DXing with that. Um, but yeah, overall, you know, I'm extremely happy with it. I know it's a radio that divides opinion, and I know from the comments that I've been reading over the last days and weeks that my reception videos on Oxford Shortwave Vlog have, I think, have changed a few people's opinions about this radio. Um, some people have said to me that when it came out they wanted to buy it, but they were too scared to because of the negative reviews. Um, and that's fair enough. My view is that I would strongly recommend this radio, um, and in doing that, I would hope that you receive an example that performs as well as mine, because uh, at the moment, uh, this portable and my 2001D, I think are the best portable radios that I own. Uh, and the benefit of this radio is that you can still buy it new on the shelf. So, um, you know, anyway, I hope that was helpful. Um, I just thought it was worthwhile updating my uh, original review, which I think I did without uh, prior to taking the radio out, or I had, certainly hadn't used it very much. Um, and if you decide to get one, uh, I don't think you'll be disappointed as long as you get a good example. Uh, okay, well, thanks for watching.